everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's Down and Dirty is how to become more efficient when you're loading dirt. And it's not gonna be a super lengthy one because I've only got a couple things for you here. Uh, one of the tips I want to reiterate from previous videos, um, the more functions you do at a time in an excavator, the slower everything's gonna be. So a prime example is this is only turning. You can see it's pretty quick. But now look at how slow we turn if I add in a couple more functions. You can see that that's significantly slower than just turning. And so one of the critical things to think about when you're wanting to load trucks or move dirt the fastest way possible is limit your functions to only one or two functions at a time. And that way all of your hydraulic power is going to that one single function. Now, when I boom and stick out to get to the end of my pile there, you're gonna have a couple functions going, but you notice I don't really do that until we're over our we're over our actual load up the bucket area. And I should empty the bucket, you know what, whatever, you can bitch at me in the comments. I'm trying to make it down and dirty. I'm not concentrating on what I'm doing, guys. Just pipe down. Anyway, so that's the number one thing, is limit the number of functions that you're doing at any given time. So as you can see, I will boom and stick out at the same time to get back into my pile. I'm gonna load my bucket. We're gonna get to this as another one, just Hold on to your pants. I know there's gonna be comments on me getting too close and crowding myself. But you're gonna notice that I'm, I'm very much, especially when I go over my swing area, I'm only doing one function, maybe two functions at a time. And then I'm back into my dirt. So that's number one is limiting your functions. Number two is the thing I know I'm already gonna get comments on. Don't crowd yourself. Because I'm already having to reach over to where I'm dumping the material. So it doesn't make sense to, to pull in all the way tied up against me, spin, spend all that time sticking out and dumping to then turn around and dig right tight against me. If we can keep our load area and our dump pile at relatively the same distance, I've just saved myself a ton of fuckery with, with getting the arm in position. And what do I mean by that? Well, look, so I'm gonna take a scoop, all I ha and I'm gonna wait for Rick to get out of the way here so I can demonstrate this, but I want you to notice I'm not gonna boom or stick. I'm just gonna swing over. And look at that. I am right where I need to be to dump. So there's not a whole bunch of, of reaching and pulling back and reaching and pulling back. I'm just already there. And that kind of plays in with tip number one where we're limiting the number of functions we're doing because I'm already over my dump area because of how I've positioned myself on the pile. So I'm already loading far more efficiently than when we started. Now another point that I wanna bring up. A lot of rookies. We got a fence here that I don't wanna hit. Let's pretend it's the side rails of a dump truck. Oh, sweet Jesus, we don't wanna do that. We don't wanna have a trucker up our ass. So we're gonna, we're gonna boom way up here because we don't want to hit that side rail. And then we're going to swing over here and then we're either going to bomb our truck, which our trucker hates by the way, and he will bitch at you for that because that sucks. And I've been in the truck, it sucks guys. Or what we're going to do is we're going to boom way up, we're going to swing over our truck and then we're going to have to boom back down so that we don't bomb our truck and then we're going to do that. Did you notice how much time we wasted versus and this just takes time. If I only raise up to the level I need to, just where I'm right above the side rail, that, that not only saves me time on booming up, it also saves me time on booming down over the truck or booming down over my work site. So I'm saving all of this up and down, up and down, up and down, going back and forth, back and forth. And the only thing I've changed is how high I boom up right here. I just want enough that I'm gonna safely clear that fence. You know, if I've got six inches to a foot, that's perfect. Because I will say you don't want to get yourself into a situation where you do accidentally get too arrogant and hit one of your guy's side rails because he will come unglued. Those oak side rails are very expensive uh, and those truckers do not like replacing them. Now the final trick I'm going to give you, and then we'll wrap this baby up with a tidy bow, is how to efficiently and quickly empty your bucket. Now I'm going to say this, if you're loading a truck, you need to be careful here. What you can do is a quick flick with your stick, and that was, I'm gonna dramatize this a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. When you see it in action, you're gonna notice I'm not nearly this rough on the machine, because you do have to realize this is a little, that's a little rougher on the machine if you get real aggressive with it. But as you're dumping your bucket, if you give your stick just a little flick, boom, flick, 
it pushes all of that material. It just immediately ejects everything out of the excavator. And so now we're able to empty that bucket probably in half the time it was gonna take if I just waited for the dirt to run out. Boom, little flick. Yeah, you got some residual in there, but who cares? Especially in a production situation, who cares? Generally, we're loading off-road trucks at this point when we're, when we're operating this aggressively. Now, the reason I say you need to be careful with this one, um, first of all, like I mentioned, it is a little harder on the machine, especially if you're getting real aggressive on that stick flick. But the more important thing is, when you start getting into bigger excavators, uh, you're talking a substantial amount of material and weight in that bucket. And if I take that material and now put a serious amount of force behind it, uh, you can actually really rock that truck uh, because you're you're forcing all you know, call it five tons worth of material, whatever that weight is. You're pushing it out and into the truck, and so you can really rock the truck. It might, it's not necessarily going to damage the truck, but you're absolutely going to get your driver to perk up and probably bitch at you. So just be careful from that standpoint um, with the little flick. I generally don't do that when I'm loading trucks, but in a situation like this where I'm just bailing dirt, or if I were offloading an off-road truck, I'm sorry, not offloading, if I were loading an off-road truck, uh, that is also where I'd use just a little flick. And it's just a little one. You can see there, that was not a big flick. You're assisting the bucket unloading you are not going out of your way to purely use the stick flick as a way to unload the bucket. Another thing you'll see me do too, where it's not even a true flick, you kind of open the bucket and then stick out from underneath the load, if you will, kind of like I did there. When you're not in the flow, it looks a lot jerkier and it's not nearly as smooth and I don't look as professional, but when you really get into the rhythm and the flow, it just becomes a very, very slight flick of the stick and you easily cut your off, your offload time in half on what it takes to dump that bucket. So that's all I've got for you today. I hope this has helped you guys out. Feel free to drop comments and questions in the, in the comments down below, and we'll catch you guys on the next Down and Dirty.